Good morning, everybody. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God his Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This morning at our Mass we'll be praying for the repose of the soul of Phoebe Scotland on the first anniversary of her death. We'll also be praying for Leslie Nerding, who is undergoing an operation this time, and for Nora O'Brien, who is sick. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's call to mind our need for God's healing and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sinfulness and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Prompt our actions with your inspiration, we pray, O Lord, and further them with your constant help, that all we do may always begin from you, and by you be brought to completion. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, See, Today I set before you life and prosperity, death and disaster. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I enjoin on you today, if you love the Lord your God and follow his ways, if you keep his commandments, his laws, his customs, you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you are entering to make your own. But if your heart strays, if you refuse to listen, if you let yourself be drawn into worshipping other gods and serving them, I tell you today, you will most certainly perish. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. I set before you life or death, blessing or curse. Choose life then, so that you and your descendants may live in the love of the Lord your God, obeying his voice, clinging to him. For in this your life consists, and on this depends your long stay in the land, which the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he would give them. The word of the Lord. Happy are those who place their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who place their trust in the Lord. 
Happy indeed is the one who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor lingers in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. Happy those who have placed their trust in the Lord. He's like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves shall never fade, and all that he does shall prosper. Happy those who have placed their trust in the Lord. Not so are the wicked, not so, for they, like winnowed chaff, shall be driven away by the wind. For the Lord guards the way of the just, but the way of the wicked leads to doom. Happy are those who place their trust in the Lord. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus. A pure heart create for me, O God, and give me again the joy of your help. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man is destined to suffer grievously, to be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and to be put to death, and to be raised up on the third day. Then to all he said, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let them renounce themselves and take up their cross every day and follow me. For anyone who wants to save their life will lose it. But anyone who loses their life for my sake, that person will save it. What gain then is it for you to have won the whole world and to have lost or ruined your very self. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I popped around to the Dominion Centre this morning to get my first jab. And for those of you who've been there, you know there's a, a bit of queuing beforehand and then you go into the big hall and you get your jab after the doctor's asked you a few questions and then you're asked to sit and wait for 15 minutes just to make sure you don't have any serious reaction. So I'm sitting there waiting, having had the jab, and there's a woman on my left-hand side who's also sitting waiting and she's obviously using WhatsApp or Messenger typing away. And I notice that she seems to be getting more and more agitated. And uh, the young woman who was keeping an eye on us all in the um, waiting area also noticed this. So she went over to make sure she was all right. And the woman lifted up the phone and said, look, they're all asking me why I had the jab. And the young woman quietly said, you had the jab to protect yourself and to protect your loved ones. And the woman thought this was a nice answer and that was what she typed and she calmed down. You see, she'd done the right thing, but for a brief moment or two, she couldn't put into words why she'd done the right thing. In that first reading, 
Moses gathers the people together, the people he's been traveling with. And he knows he's not going to enter into the promised land because from time to time, these people have misbehaved, have forgotten why they did the right thing coming out of slavery. And because of their forgetfulness, God has told Moses that he won't himself enter the promised land. So Moses gathers the people to remind them, to remind them of all that God has done. Most of these people, most of the time, did the right thing, but Moses knew that they were in danger of forgetting. And it's so important that they remember that he puts it this way. Today, I'm laying before you a choice, a choice between life and death. Choose life. As we enter into our Lenten season, it's a good thing to remember to recall all that the Lord has done. Not that we need to tell everybody else, but so that we understand. And so that in all that we do, we may be choosing the life that God offers to us. So let's pray for ourselves. Maybe perhaps to pray especially by those people who are being misled and misguided by misinformation, both about the jab, but also about the reality of God's love for them. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this bread to offer which earth has given to us and human hands have made. May it become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of hands like ours. May it become for us our spiritual drink. Pray now, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Regard with favour, O Lord, we pray, the offerings we set upon this sacred altar, that bestowing on us your pardon, your oblation may give honour to your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacral, sacred paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels and thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory 
as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death which he freely accepted, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke that bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more, giving you thanks and praise, he gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. <coughs> this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his life, death, and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking in this body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Cardinal Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember Phoebe, whom you have called from this life. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sinfulness, but on the faith of your whole church, and grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer each other a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of our world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. So let's take a moment now to make our spiritual communion with the Lord. Asking that through the power of the Spirit, during this Lenten season, we may accept the life Christ offers to us. Let us pray. Almighty God, who have made known to your people the ways of eternal life, lead them by that path, we pray, to you, the unfading light, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you all. And may Almighty God bless each one of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. Our Mass is ended.